They say, don't they? They say that political correctness has gone mad. And I think that might be true, actually, because uh, I was at the zoo the other day and I got told off and I said, look, there's a mongoose. Can't say that anymore. No. <laughs> Special needs goose, that's what you're going to say. <laughs> it's gone mad, isn't it? It's gone mad. You know? I saw a puffer fish, I thought, I'm not saying a word. There were some alternative punchlines to that joke, and I thought I stepped away from them. One of them I was a bit concerned about. I thought, oh, and I wasn't sure. I thought, oh, maybe it's racist, I'm not sure. And I didn't obviously didn't want it to be racist. I don't think I'm, not, I'm racist, I'm not racist. And if it turned out it was racist, I'd be a bit knackered, right? Because none of my best friends are black. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have no excuses. Because I hate that. You know, people have been accused of racism. They always come out and go, oh, that Weasley excuse. No, oh, some of my best friends are black. Oh, it's horrible. Jade Goody did it on Big Brother, wasn't it? She was, she was racist, wasn't she? She wasn't very racist. Didn't have an armband on. But, uh, <laughs> put it this way, she ain't going to win a mobo. Is she? <laughs> and she comes out and goes, uh, no, I'm not racist. Some of my best friends are black. This is, oh, you know, people don't do it for other things, do they? I'm not a murderer. Some of my best friends are alive. <laughs> I'm not a paedophile, so my best friends are kids. Oh, that doesn't work, does it? Yeah. <laughs> that makes things worse, doesn't it? <laughs> but political correctness is very interesting, isn't it? It's changed the world, hasn't it? You know, I was thinking, a lot of the songs we used to sing when I was a kid, you can't sing those anymore. You know, simple songs like, remember that one? Remember that one? When Johnny grows up, he'll be a soldier. When Jimmy grows up, he'll be a sailor. When Timmy grows up, he'll be a tailor. And all the girls will be wives Washing up and cooking dinner Washing up and cooking dinner Washing up and cooking dinner Wives, wives, wives <laughs> It seemed so innocent at the time, you know <laughs> I didn't realise the sinister subtext at work there really. I think one of the things that I'm most known for is my inquiring mind. I think that's one of the things people always say about me. Here comes Sean with his inquiring mind. <laughs> the other day I was watching the television. I was watching, you know those, those compare the market, compare the meerkat ads? I was watching one of those. And I thought, how come that's OK that they've got a Russian Eastern European accent? How come that's fine? Nobody objects to that. I was thinking, if those meerkats were Chinese, they'd be uproar, wouldn't they? <laughs> if they came out and went, you want cheaper car insurance? <laughs> You go, comparemarket.com! <laughs> you bloody idiot! You go, whoa, what are you doing? You can't do that. Oh, they were Mexican. If you want to compare me cats, <laughs> compare me cat.com. You can compare me cats like my sister. Well, really, meerkats from Africa should be an African voice, shouldn't it? For cheaper cat insurance. <laughs> Whoa! What do you think you're doing? S stop him now. And the reason, the reason that I mention that is because I realised something quite profound the other day. I was at home, I was a bit bored. I wasn't wearing these clothes, I was wearing my normal clothes. I was a bit bored. I started checking the labels on my clothes. <laughs> And I realised something, like, at that moment, at that moment, I realised if it wasn't for the Chinese, I would have been naked. Yeah. <laughs> All my clothes were made in China, everything. Even my pants were made in China, yeah? And they're not like chinese -y pants. They haven't got dragons on them or anything like that. <laughs> Just an ordinary pair of pants. Then I realised my phone was made in China, my telly was made in China. I've got an Ikea table, I assume Sweden. No, China. I worked out, I'm virtually Chinese. <laughs> the only thing I haven't got is the accent, right? But if I start doing that, going, hello, I'm Sean Locke, people go, what are you doing? I think, how can I possibly be racist? I bloody love China. I'm obsessed with the place. <laughs> Ideally, I'd live in a pagoda. Yeah? <laughs> to be honest, I don't think you can be racist about a country that's more economically powerful than you anyway. In fact, the way our economy's going, soon it'd be racist to do our voices. Yeah. <laughs> People in Beijing go, hello, I'm from London. They'll go, ooh. <laughs> Not comfortable with that. And also, I don't think the Chinese are bothered what accents we're doing. All they want to know is, all they want to know is, how much shit we want. That's what they want to know. <laughs> how much shit you want? <laughs> much as you've got. We love it. Keep sending it over. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> OK. Make
like more shit! <laughs> you got enough shit yet? No, we just used up that lot you just sent us. Keep it coming. We love it. Eee. Bloody hell. Come on, no time for sleeping. Gotta make shit for people in West. <laughs> Can't even make their own fucking pants. <laughs> Hang on, how are you gonna pay for all this shit? Uh, we were gonna borrow the money from you. It's funny, right? We make shit, we sell them shit, now we give them money to buy shit. Well, you find funny when I have day off in December. <laughs> so, it's a weird paper, The Sun, isn't it? Sometimes I think The Sun's really funny. Like, I think news in briefs in The Sun, I think that's very funny. You know, we'll, like, they have the page three go, a little bubble, or a comment on the topical news of the day. You know, something like, Avril from Gosport thinks it's outrageous that Gordon Brown misled the Chilcot inquiry. <laughs> She's standing like there with her tits out like that. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's really outrageous. <laughs> and I'm all wet. <laughs> no, because I think that's funny. That's a good joke, isn't it? Because you don't associate glamour models with having strong opinions on those subjects, do you? I mean, let's face it, they're not the brightest, are they? Yeah. They spend more time in their school uniform now than when they were meant to. <laughs> sometimes it's a bit creepy, the sun, isn't it? You know, like that girl from Harry Potter, Emma Watson, played Hermione? Right? You know her, like, like, you know they had a countdown to her 16th birthday? <laughs> but they did, that's true, I'm not making that up. They, they did, you know. I was thinking, imagine if I did that. <laughs> imagine the trouble I'd get into if I did that. <laughs> if I followed 15-year-old girls around the street. <laughs> Five days to go! <laughs> We're all very excited. <laughs> Look, I made an advent calendar. Mm. I think I'd end up on the front page, don't I? Ironically. I say my wife, actually. We're not actually married. We're not married. We've been together a long time. Quite a long time. A girlfriend doesn't seem significant a term to describe the relationship. You know. She doesn't like Lodger. She hates that. Um, <laughs> Cohabit tea. Ooh, like you've both got something, isn't it? <laughs> Partner, like you're in business. Lover. Doesn't really describe our life together. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I absolutely adore her. I'm quite happy standing up in public saying, absolutely adore whatever you're supposed to call her. Um, <laughs> I do it like it was her birthday the other day. I thought I'd do something special. So what I did was I got up really, really early, really early. Fucked off for the day. <laughs> She said it was the best birthday <laughs> she's ever had. Yeah. I got it right, Fritz, because last year I got it wrong. I said, what do you want? She said, surprise me. So I phoned her from Morocco. <laughs> oh, oh, got it wrong again, didn't I? <laughs> it's always getting things wrong. I come back from the shops, it's all wrong. Because apparently there's a big difference between semi-skimmed and banana-flavoured milk. <laughs> <laughs> That's just nitpicking. <laughs> And I made a bit of a boo-boo the other day because, you know, sometimes women ask you what you're thinking, ask men what they're thinking, and I made the mistake, I told the truth. I thought I told her exactly what I was thinking. Big mistake. We just, we just made sex. And, um... <laughs> she said, Sean, what are you thinking? I said, well, I thought I'd tell her. I said, oh, OK, well, I was just... Uh, I was just trying to imagine a world with no herbs. What? I said, don't worry, it was fine, you know. Trains ran on time, everyone went to work, but something missing, you know. <laughs> now, I think our relationship problems are similar to loads of others. I think, I think basically it's a man living with a woman. I, mean, I wouldn't want to live with a man, you know, you know. She often says to me, the trouble with you, Sean, is you're such a bloke. You're such a bloke. I said, I thought that was the idea. <laughs> she said, no, you never let me know how you feel. Not whether I'm hot, uncomfortable, or hungry. I'm very good at that. <laughs> Boiling here, love, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Window, good idea, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm parched. Any chance of a cat? <laughs> no, 
not very good at that. No, she said, you never let me know how much you love me. And I thought about this. I thought, what's the best way to let someone know how much you love them? Is it with flowers or jewellery or a meal? Of course it's not, is it? The best way to let someone know how much you love them is with a pie chart. <laughs> Because that way they know exactly. <laughs> Emotional precision. You know? Do it like it's a meeting. Would you like to come in? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get your tea, coffee or anything? OK, let's have a look at this year's chart. <laughs> I'll just flip it over here. There's the chart. That's the blues segment. That's my family. Stays pretty constant, yeah. It'd be quite a foxy lady to get into that bit, I can tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yellow bit there, that's ice cream. Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> but this big red bit here, that's you, yeah. Which is a 20% increase on last year. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea, isn't it? Because also you can use it to dump someone, can't you? Because <laughs> you don't have to say anything, do you? You have to do anything, oh, it's not you, it's me, and all oh, the things need some time. You just point to the chart and go... <laughs> <laughs> what happened there, then? <laughs> Another thing, right, also, I want to live in a world where you're not allowed to advertise to children. No advertising to kids. It's not on. People come into my home, uninvited, through the medium of television, and they wave shiny shit in my kids' faces, right? <laughs> And it's not fair. We can defend ourselves against advertising. We can make judgments, choices and decisions. Children can't do that. They can't do that because they're fucking idiots. <laughs> they're morons. They're thick as pig shit. <laughs> if you put a picture of Shrek on a bag of gravel, they want it. <laughs> Big hammock of snot hanging out of their chin. <laughs> If all advertising was door-to-door, -door, if you could only advertise door-to-door, -door, you wouldn't tolerate it. Someone knocked on your door, you opened your door and went, can I speak to your seven-year-old daughter, please? <laughs> Bring her out. And he bends down, ignores you, and goes, look, it's a My Pretty Polly Pocket mini vanity valise set. And that spins around, that opens up, and then messages in there, and you click characters and play with your friends and like that. After a while, you go, fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy said it again, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> Still, you hear it at school soon enough. Or they will. Because <laughs> you never think you're the source, do you? <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if all advertising was done door to door. I'd love that. Especially when celebrities did adverts. Because that'd be great, wouldn't it? You'd be walking across your hallway, the letterbox would flip open, and you'd hear a voice going, Hello, it's Sir Chris Hoy here. <laughs> Before I go cycling, I like a bowl of bran flakes. Christ. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> it's a Chris Hoy here. Before I go cycling, I like a bowl of brown flakes. Oh, kill me now. <laughs> and he'd bump into other celebrities on the street. Oh, hello, Kira. Hello, Chris. Hi, it's Kieran Knightley here from the films. Yes, I didn't think I needed the money either. <laughs> anyway, I'm wearing a really tight cat suit, and when I walk away, I'd like you to look at my ass and think about Coco Chanel. <laughs> yeah. It's really subtle. It's my ass and perfume. <laughs> oh, who's this? Hello, hello, Ray. Hello, Kira. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ray Winstone here. Put a bet on you, slag! <laughs> There's loads of markets in play now. <sighs> oh, who's that coming along the street? <laughs> Oh, it's David Beckham. Hello, Ray. <laughs> Man of a thousand voices. Hello, David Beckham here. Um, everything under the sun. <laughs> All of it. Hats, flannels, spanners, trousers, <laughs> motorbikes. Just buy shit, all right? 